Good morning, and welcome to Calling All Christians. Today is the uh, 16th of May, which is a Sunday, and this is a public broadcast show I put on. It goes on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., and I do this for the glory of Jesus. I did it in Rhode Island, and I've done it in Massachusetts, and I'm restarting it again in Massachusetts. Um, I'm broadcasting from a little church down on South Main Street at 264 uh, South Main, which is the Bible study room, and the chapel's next door. They have service every Sunday at 1.30. You're more than welcome to come. And uh, I'm going to be, uh, I videotape some of them, but I've got to get it set up to where I can put those up on uh, YouTube in audio form anyway, or video form, and then you can watch them. Because most churches do that today, uh, especially in the times we're living in. Today I'd like to uh, start a little bit of a show with a prayer. And the Lord had me put music to a song, or to a prayer, that Jesus gave all of us to pray. It's called the Our Father. So I'm going to sing the music, sing the song, and you should know it because you probably know the words to the Our Father. <clears throat> so, this is the music he inspired me to put to it. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we Forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And ever, Amen, Amen, Amen. All right, that's the Our Father. So Jesus inspired the music. And uh, just start everything you do with a prayer. Just silently within yourself. You can say it out loud. Pray the Our Father. That's the prayer he gave us. And uh, there's so many prayers. It's, the Bible says pray ceaselessly. So really, if you just said the name of Jesus and walked around throughout your entire day saying the name of Jesus in your mind silently, You'll be praying ceaselessly. Oh, you have to go to work and you have jobs sometimes that require all your attention. The Lord knows that. He gave you the job. <laughs> so he knows what's going to happen. He knows it all. He is the all. And uh, I hope everybody comes to know that more and more. This will be a 30-minute show, so I'm going to start with some inspiration. Um, I used to do an hour show. I was a long time. So we're going to start with some inspiration anyway. And we're going to just open the book. Right there is good. Okay, and this one's called Dwell Apart. And this is the Lord, two women's claim in 1932 in England that... Spirit of the Lord spoke to them. And I know in 
2001 in a, a camper in Oak Embers Campground in Rhode Island, the Lord spoke to me too. And it's different for each person. For me, he just said, follow me. And for these two women, he gave them a whole bunch of things. And they made a book and a publishing company published it. They can't claim, I mean, they claim a copyright, but really you can't copyright God's words. And so, but the women are, no one knows who they are right to today. They did not want their names because, you know, God's love is free. It doesn't, you know, it's given, it's given as a gift. We don't deserve it. Um, but he gave it to us anyway because he loves us so much. All right, so it's called Dwell Apart. And the words say this, Rest more with me. If I, the Son of God, needed those times of quiet communion with my Father, away, alone, from noise, from activity, then surely you need them too. Refilling with the Spirit is a need. That dwelling apart, that shutting yourself away in the very secret place of your being, away alone with me. From these times you come forth in power to bless and heal. Praise be the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And a Bible verse that goes along with this is from Ephesians 5 verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Great words from Ephesians 5, verse 18. So, if you think just about the inspiration, dwell apart with Him. How many of us actually do that? Really, I mean, you could say, well, I go to church on Sunday. Well, that's true, but you're not apart with Him. You're with a whole bunch of other people sitting in a church listening to a, a mass, a sermon, or whatever church, type church you go to. You could go to an evangelical, uh, you could go to a Catholic church, you could go to a Baptist church, you could go to a Methodist church, there's all kinds. Uh, there's only one Christian church, and that's Jesus Christ. He is the church. And we, in all these different churches, are members of the same church, which is him. And there's differences between the churches. That's why there's different churches. Because they didn't agree on certain things that they read in the Bible. Their interpretation, which really should be God's interpretation. John said it, said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. So the words in the Bible, that's God speaking. Through the prophets and through the different people he chose, because this is all his doing, he created everything, including the devil, whom sometimes he gives power over his children. I don't know why. Perhaps just to show the devil, you're not in charge. I can make you in charge. I created you. But the devil can't do anything without the Lord's permission. Right now, in this world, in the 2021, it seems like the devil's running rampant. And a lot of prophecies are coming out of the Bible, especially through revelations. They seem to be coming true. Um, but only God really knows that. And, you know, things seem to be coming into the light, which I, I can see. Things that were in darkness are now having light shed on them. And the truth is coming to the surface. Praise God and thank you, Jesus. I hope that truth strikes a lot of souls and they wake up to the fact that they need to spend a lot more time with Jesus. And we all need to spend that private time. Okay, like I was saying before, you can go to church, that's one thing. You know, you can go to a Bible study. That's, again, with other people. But how many of us really go off and just sit with the Lord? Because he's there anyway. No matter where you go, you can go to the barbershop. 
and the Lord's going to be there with you. He's inside us. He's outside us. He's around us. He protects us all day. He tries to lead us if we let him. But we have to let him do that. That's the hard part. Because people are distracted more and think that they need to control what goes on in their life. They, If they want more things, they have to make more money to buy more things. But in the Bible, I think it was uh, Solomon said, it's all vanity, all of it. Everything we see today is vanity and it's all gonna pass away. The only thing that won't pass away is the Spirit of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why it's so important for us to get to know Him. And that's difficult because He doesn't always, you're gonna hear people talking, I'm on a, I'm right next to the sidewalk out here, so you hear cars going by and ambulance once in a while. And I do this, I don't make a script for this, so if I make, you know, seem to stumble a little bit here and there, that's okay. Um, I'd rather keep it real. And I invite all the Christians out there. I call it calling all Christians because all of us are brothers and sisters. We should all want to know each other, talk to each other, you know. I mean, I've made some friends. I've got a, a, a person in Australia that writes quite frequently. I've got another person um, that, that writes me. Um, I send out daily inspiration. So if you want to get on my email list and, uh, or just have you know, the phone number, I'll have it in the credits. It's 774-417-3568. You can call me and I'll, we'll sit there and have fellowship on the phone. The important point is, is to have fellowship, to be around others that think as you do or want to do. It's very, very important. And uh, of course, <clears throat> you should read your Bible every day. Proverbs, Psalms, just open it up and just read one. By that small action, you're telling Jesus that you're trying. That may be all you do that day. You can actually pray ceaselessly by just saying the Our Father in your head as you go from job to job or, you know, there'll be times when you have to concentrate on what's in front of you. Like I said before, he knows that. And as soon as you're done with that, your mind is somewhat free. You can sit there and say an Our Father. You can say two, you can say three. There was a job back in 2001 I used to go to, and I would pray the Our Father all the way to work and all the way home. I was alone with him in the car. As you are most of the time, you drive. Or if you have the family in the car, he's still there. He takes care of your wife or your girlfriend or your kids or your friends. And he puts situations in front of you that he would like you to attend to. You know, I mean, he is God and, and he can do, do everything. But what spiritual lessons have you learned if he just did it all? You haven't learned any. And there is good and evil in the world. In the flesh world, a lot of temptations, cell phones, um, one of the biggest, and I'm timing it because it's got to be 30 minutes, so I got a little timer on, and uh, that way I know when I basically have to start shutting it down, and I'll play another song. <clears throat> He's inspired me to write. I played professionally. I played secular music for quite a few years. You know, I made a living at it for 11 years. Um, I love music. Music is a universal language. Um, and there's some great musicians in the world today. Great musicians. And it's interesting to see some of the younger prodigies out there that are just like things. Eight years old, they sit down and they're playing like 
Beethoven stuff and Tchaikovsky stuff, you know, really, really complicated music. Um, the Lord didn't give me that gift. He gave me the gift of, he gave me a, a good voice that people seem to like, the tones in the voice. And um, so I always had pretty good success playing. When I went and auditioned, I always was hired. Yeah, a couple of times, not so. They wanted a different style of music that I didn't play, which I understand. I'm more or less good for a restaurant style, small lounge. When people come in, they just want to have a quiet drink, sit and talk with their friends, and have like, it'd be like uh, elevator music in the background. Only it's my renditions of those elevator songs. And now I'm, the Lord's kind of leading me to just work for him. I should have been doing this probably a long time ago. But, you know, it took, I'm a, probably a more difficult student. And, but he's, once he starts a good work in you, which he started me back in 2001, he, uh, he will finish the work. And I thank him. I don't deserve any of this. My life was a total shambles. I wasn't a bad person, but I was bad in some different way. I was addicted to things that I should have been addicted to. And um, when you when you uh, come to him, or actually he comes, he came and got me like he did Paul on the Damascus Road. Um, some people have gone to him, and you know. They were sincere enough to where he accepted them and whatnot. So with, uh, with me, it was a different, he came to me and changed my whole life. Once you're, you know, the word love that the world tries to put a definition on, you can't. God is love. You know, oh, I love you. Well, that's easy words takes a lot of actions to actually show people that you do. But when you're showing them, you can't expect a reward every time you show them. It just doesn't happen that way. That's more or less vanity that you want, to, you want them to recognize every time you do something nice for somebody. So you need that response. God isn't that way. His love for us is unconditional. There are no conditions to it. It's just there. And it's the greatest feeling you will ever feel in all existence. He is all love. In his presence, you will feel love and have pleasures forevermore. That's what the Bible tells us. Maybe not exactly, but pretty much. And you should, you know, Try to uh, encourage your family members to read the Bible. I'm, my wife is helping me right now do some, uh, she's taking books with Bible verses and coloring in the, uh, the words and stuff and doing a wonderful job and I'm putting them on the uh, storefront door here called Storefront Religion. It's not as, well, man's made religion kind of a, a business, but it's not a business, it's God. You know, and God is love. And that's what we all need to learn more about is how to be more loving like Jesus. And I've got another song I've, I'm working on. I didn't write the words to this. I read them on a Christian poetry site quite a few years ago. And while I was reading them, the this music came into my mind. I, I liked the words and I picked up the guitar and the Lord had me put music to it. And so I sing them, you know. And I think, I can't remember the lady's name that wrote a great poet, Christian poet anyway. I don't know, I didn't read any of her other poetry. But uh, she, uh, she wrote some great stuff. I actually put words, uh, music to a few of her songs, uh, poet. Poems. Um, what else we got? 
Okay, here in Fall River, because this is being broadcast to Fall River, because you'd be on public broadcast if you're watching this, down at South Main Street at the Gates of Praise, right across from the Dalafon, um, we have Saturdays, we do Christian movies. One, two o'clock on Saturday, we've got popcorn, soda, and some Christian fellowship, and we can all watch a movie. And they're great movies, I've watched like three of them now, and very inspiring. Much better than some of the stuff you're going to watch on secular TV. Um, there's a definite spiritual war going on between the devil and, and uh, God. God's going to win because God created the devil, so <laughs> you're never greater than your creator. So you're, it's, he's using the devil to accomplish his, his uh, plan for humanity. And, we all have to realize that. Once you are have surrendered to the Lord and uh, you walk with Him, then you don't fear. You fear God because He can take it all away in a heartbeat. And uh, He can crush you. He created you. Whether we want to believe that or not, we all think, well, our mom and dad got together, they had junk to bed, blah, 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 and now here we are. Well. They did do those things, but the spark that caused that fertilization came from the Lord. Medical science, oh no, no, it just happens. Well, we can make babies and test. Yeah, you can do a lot of things, but you can't make the egg and the sperm. You can take them from donors, but you can't make them. Just like a tree, just like the grass. You can make it imitation, and it looks quite real. You look at some of the flowers that people, you know, artificial flowers that are, they're artificial and they're beautiful. They look just, a lot of them can almost fake you out. They, they seem to be real, but they're not real because they weren't made by God. Man cannot create what God created. They're trying to take it over right now, I think. They want to take it over. They want to make themselves God. And they think they can. Well, I guess we're all going to find out. I don't think they can, but we'll see what happens. So anyway, we're down here. We have Saturday, Sunday mass, uh, so we'll call it a mass, it's a service. And uh, right now they're teaching the Old Testament, so they're reading from the Old Testament on Sundays. And then on Wednesday night, and the service time on Sundays is 1.30 in the afternoon. So you could actually be a, you could be a Catholic and you go to a Mass in the morning, and then you could go to a, our service in the afternoon. We're all Christians. It doesn't, it should not matter. You know, churches, I guess they want people because they need money to keep the doors open. Well, I understand that, but it doesn't mean that we can't all, you know, I should be able, as a Christian, go into any Catholic or, or any church, Catholic included, and be able to be set, given a time to go up and give my testimony to the congregation. Right. I've tried that in, in different churches. Baptist, Methodist, no, that didn't happen. Yeah, that, they call it, uh, they, they're afraid of uh, sheep stealing. In other words, you go in and you inspire their congregation, some of the congregation leave and go to your church, and therefore they lose the money. They worry about that, because they have to have money to operate. And I, I'm not about that, I just, in fact, this Sunday I'm gonna go, I have, I make these t-shirts, I make these, and um, I give them away for a donation to the church here. So you can come in and say, yeah, I got a penny, okay. What shirt do you want? <laughs> or I got a hundred dollars, okay, what shirt do you want? Kind of like the, the uh, in the Bible where the, they tell the story of the, the master that uh, 
he paid each person in the morning. He said, I'll pay you this if you work. And they do. They started working. Next one comes in four hours later. I'll pay you this, which was the same amount for working. So he worked from that time to the end. And the last one comes in, let's say, five minutes before work ends. He said, I'll pay you this for the work. So he works five minutes. Well, it comes to pay, they all get the same pay. And the first ones go, wait a minute. We worked a lot longer. And the master said, well, what do we agree on? I told you I would pay this for your work. So you worked and I paid you. It's the same thing with the Lord. And it goes, it supplies from the beginning and it will, it will uh, be the same till the end. The Bible relates from the old to the new to the future which belongs to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever. People, they, they want to see the kingdom of God on this earth, which is going to pass away. There will be a new earth, and a new Jerusalem, and a new heaven. So, all that's his, his doing. Let me see what time I got. Ah, three minutes and 44 seconds. Okay. I'm going to, this is a song that I had, that really inspired me to write. I wrote the words and the music to this through his inspiration. This kind of tells you about my experience of meeting him. One day in a camper, the Lord, he came to me. And he said to me, dear brother, I love you, can't you see? I love for you is stronger than all the ocean tides. And when he said these words to me, sat down and I cried now I'm talking about Jesus talking about Jesus talking about Jesus Christ and Lord, Lord, Lord I'm talking about Jesus talking about Jesus talking about Jesus Christ the Lord that day he changed my life for good I began to see the price he paid to save the soul on top of Calvary his love for us became complete on that faithful day now I live inside his heart because he is the way and I'm talking about Jesus talking about Jesus talking about Jesus Christ and Lord, 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 I'm talking about Jesus, talking about Jesus, talking about Jesus Christ alone. So let me hear you speaking, Lord, in accents clear and still. Above our storms and passions, and members of our self will. Oh, speak to reassure me, Lord. Yes, and hold control me. Speak and make me listen. As you're the guardian of our souls, and I'm talking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus. Christ and Lord, Lord, Lord. I'm talking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus Christ the Lord, loving Jesus Christ the Lord, needing Jesus Christ the Lord. Live performance. Always make mistakes. <laughs> I'm just now memorizing a lot of these songs. Well, I've enjoyed having you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you can give me a call in the credits here, our activities here, and uh, phone number. You can call me. Come down. We can have Bible. We can listen to the Bible together on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Wednesday night, they have a Bible study here, the New Testament. 
So you have a great day. Thanks again for being here. Spend a lot more time with Jesus. Bye-bye now, folks.